Jubilee Godchild, and this channel is based on living a testimonial life, which will help you guys to build faith in Christ Himself and to know that He still do work miracles today, and most importantly, to know that He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, what we do here, um, we're gonna read like one to two verses or three. And then we're going to give him praise for like 30 to 40 seconds. And then we get to the testimony. So we're not going to, you know, take long and, you know, sleep on here. So we're just going to get to the point. We're going to get to do what we're here to do. And at the end, I think that we're going to do some prayers in the spirit. So I'm going to be praying for you guys plus myself. We're never too old to get prayer. We never have enough. <laughs> so... We can never get enough prayer, you know? So yeah, so let's get started. We're going to be reading 1 Peter 4, verse 10 to 12. So we're going to do this as fast as possible because my daughter, mm, she's being a toddler right now. Okay, So verse 10. For the scriptures say, if you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies verse 11 turn away from evil and do good search for peace and work to maintain it verse 12 the eye of the lord watch over those who do right and his ears are open to their prayers but the lord turn his face against those who do evil i'm sure that the the verse speaks for itself guys so live your life if you want to enjoy it if you want to see happy days many years of happy days um stop speaking evil stuff against people even yourself stop speaking evil things against anybody brother sister family it don't matter just don't speak evil things don't be telling lies don't use your lips to tell lie so just turn away from everything that is bad which means evil so and do good it's good to good to do good things you know so you're gonna have peace and as you do have peace you gotta work to maintain the peace and of course god is a holy god you know so he don't want us doing bad things so when we do pray when we do good things we pray he listens and if we do bad things he turns away so when you call him his ears are closed. He's not going to listen. He's not going to answer your prayer. Okay. So, yeah. So, so this is the first um, chapter we read on Peter. Okay. So, yeah. Let's go to the mini praise. And so we could get to the first testimony. We're going to make this as short as possible. Okay. Because <laughs> we're not going to sleep. <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah, here my daughter. Yay, she's me. <laughs> we were you. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. We were you. Yahweh, 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 I worship you. 
okay we're gonna end the praise here guys so yeah I don't know if you guys realize, um, for the intro, I did one recording. For the praise, I did one, a different one. So this one, I'm using a different one also. Plus, I use this um, thing because of my daughter. She's being very disturbing. So I don't want to do one long recording. I want to do something I could stop right quick as she disturbed me so you guys don't have to hear her calling mommy mommy okay so yeah so we're gonna get to the first testimony okay oh let me fix my hair <laughs> all right guys over here we're gonna be ourselves we're not gonna be something that we're not you know she disturbing me right now <laughs> mommy coming garden <laughs> but yeah let's get let's get started Y'all hear her, right? <laughs> so, first off, um, to get started, I accepted Christ when I was 12. Um, not that my parents wanted to, not that my mom wanted to. My dad really had nothing to say, but my mom, at first, she did not approve. So, I go on and did it anyway, without their consent, okay? So, I just did it anyway. So after that, I decided to accept Christ. They prayed for me and I went home that my mom had stuff to say, but I still did not care because I made the decision. I was 12, like I said, but I just felt like I didn't want to go the route that my family go. You know, all of them just so deep into the voodoo stuff. But me, I had to choose Christ, okay? Um... So after I made this decision, I came back to the U.S. and just continued to serve God. So as the troubles started when I was 12, some troubles, I started to have some encounters. Um, but we're not going to get to that yet. Um, so every testimony, like every testimony going to have this separate, you know, I'm going to say different things for different things that God do do for me. Um, so yeah, so the first experience that I had with God, I accept, I accepted him, but the first experience that I had was my first job. So I went to Haiti when I was 17 and then as I was at church, um, the same church that I had accepted Christ in and they had this service and they said that, um, so as they was doing the offering, so yeah, that's what it's called, offering. Ofwan, that's what it is in Creole, ofwan. But as they was doing the offering, and they said that to give whatever you have. It doesn't matter. In faith, it could be money. It could be earrings, necklace, watch, anything. You have to do it in faith. You have to believe in God. And as you do the offering, and trusting God at the same time. So, with the faith I had, I believed, and I trusted God. And I had this beautiful necklace that my mom brought me. I don't know where, when, or how much she paid for it. All I knew is, and I remember is I loved that necklace a lot. It made me look real good. I really liked it. Like it was very beautiful necklace that I went to Haiti with. So it was on my neck. And as the um, pastor said what she said in faith, whatever you have to give it to God and like ask God for whatever you want and he will give it to you. So I just told God, I need a job. I need my first job and I got up I took the necklace off my neck and I went on and put it in the offering basket so as I got up and put it in the basket and I went back to sit down and I was just thinking at the same time what my mom gonna have to say about that but I just did it anyway okay so as the lady was looking in the basket and the necklace that i put in the basket was hanging like 
through the bottom. And then that's when she was like, oh, look at that, a necklace. And she was just talking about it. And she said, whoever put the necklace in the basket, come up so we could pray for you. I was the only one, I guess, that put a jewel in the basket. Everybody else gave money or whatever. So I was willing to give my necklace that I had loved so much. And she prayed for me that anything that I asked God, that God should give it to me or whatever. So that was all for the day. I went home. Then I told my mom about the necklace. I don't even remember what happened. Did she cuss at me? I don't remember. So yeah, so we came back to the U.S. Um, I even forgot if I asked God for a job, though. I really did forgot. So one day, I, I don't know how many weeks, if it was three or one month. I don't know if it was a month yet or a couple weeks. And then I got up and I went to my God sister house. And then she had got called for an interview. She applied for two places and both of them called her. So this is how God does. He Like when God is doing something, he show you. He makes sure you know it's him doing it. Okay. So she applied for both of the jobs and the first one called her and the other one called her. And she set the interviews for both of them. So when I got to her house in the morning, she told me that she applied for two jobs. Both of them called. And so she told me um, both of them called. I could go to the first one. So I decided that I was going to go. And as she was telling me, her sister was listening. As her sister was listening, she decided to go to the interview also. And when I went and told my dad about it, and she told me what to say, that she filed for an application of her sister. Um, she got another job. She won't be able to make it to that interview that I'm the one she sent instead of her. I don't know where that be happening before, but it happened. Okay. The work of God. So as I went home, I told my dad and he decided he was going to take me to the interview. And when we went there, there was two people sitting there already. They were, they needed one person. The GM name was Brad. So he only needed one person. So it was me and my sister and two other person that was waiting on him. I'm like, ooh, I don't think I'm going to get hired, you know? So, <laughs> I was like, I don't think I'm going to get hired, okay? I'm going to tell you guys the truth because I totally forgot if it was God doing it in first place. And I just went. I just went on with whatever she said, but it was really God. So, they interviewed the first two person that was there. Then, after they did the first two person, then it was my um, sister's turn. Then it was me. They took me last. So they interviewed everybody. Everybody was done. When I sat on the chair in front of this guy. Mm, so he started interviewing me till he asked for my age. I told him I was 17 and he looked at my um my passport. I don't remember if it was resident or passport. But he looked at something. Then he seen my age. That's when he was like, he don't hire people under 18. And I was 17. I was about to turn 18 in a couple months. And he said that. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I said, okay. Um, and he was like, call me when you turn 18. I'm like, call you when I turn 18. He was like, yeah, call me when you turn 18. So he told everybody he's going to call them. And he told me to call him when I turn 18. I'm like, okay. So we went home. I told my mom when I got home what he said and how the interview went. And he did not call anybody. Because I never seen anybody that was interviewed the same day at the job, if you get it. So he called nobody, including my god sister. He did not call her either. So it was like a couple months, three or four months. Then when I turned 18 on my birthday, I think the next day I called him and I reminded him of me. And before that happened, this is where the big hit comes. Hold on. So before I called him, I had this revelation where I was in an office. It was like an office type of thing in a shop type of thing. It's like a shop, but there's an office if you get it. So as I was buying, it's like I was buying something. Other people was buying. And then there was this guy 
when I look to the left, I see this guy sitting on a desk. And as I see him, he was dressed in a nice um costume, if that's what you call it, a men costume or suit. And when I looked at him, I see he had papers and stuff in front of his desk. You know how a desk usually set up. And he was sitting and there was other people that came in front of him for a job. So as the people come for a job, I heard him said, this job is for Lisa Alexandra. So in the revelation, when he said that, I heard him said my name clearly and loudly. Everybody else that was in front of him, he said, nobody's getting the job. This job is for Lisa Alexandria. So when I wake up, I told my mom about it and she was like, what? Just keep your mouth closed. Don't say anything. I'm like, mom, I think I'm going to get the job. This is the dream I had. And that was the first revelation I ever had from God, you know, and when I called Brad and I reminded him of me and he was like, come to, in to get interviewed again. And when I went, he did not interview me again. He just grabbed some papers and write everything down, all my information. And he told me, this is what I'm going to need to get the pants and the shoes and the socks and stuff. And he gave me uniforms. Yeah. So he went to his car. <laughs> he went to his car, grabbed his um, uniforms, the hat and everything. It was Wendy's, by the way, the Wendy's on Jog Road and Atlantic. I was living in Delray Beach. So as he gave me the uniform, he already took me to the back, to the registers to make sure I know how to count. <laughs> I was shaking, guys. I was shaking. I was nervous. God, like God, you know... <laughs> I was just shaking and nervous my first job and the way God did it, you know, it was just the way it happened. It's not what happened. It's the way God did it, you know, for, from the revelation and everybody else got sent home <clears throat> and he had me come back and he didn't even interview me. He just started giving me, giving me everything to start the job and showing me training. <laughs> He'll do it today. And forever more, he will be doing it because he is God. He have grace. He loves us. He cares for us. And yeah, this is who he is. Love is who he is. And he cares for us. So as long as we allow him to care for us, he cares. Okay. If we allow him to. So we're going to get to praying and we're going to end this for today. So yeah let's get to prayer <laughs> okay as i pray for you guys i will be praying for me okay we're never too young we're never too old to get prayer and deliverance okay and when you do pray do pray in the spirit okay don't just pray just to pray don't just open your mouth just to open it you gotta pray in the spirit so god could hear you and answer your prayer okay Guys, if it takes a little long, just know when I'm giving testimonies, what God has done, you guys need to hear from beginning to end everything in the process. We're not going to skip through because you guys need to hear and understand. OK, so you're going to know in the process of who my God is. And hopefully I pray that you guys make him your God because you will never regret making him your God. Trust me. So we're going to start praying, okay? So we're going to pray in the Spirit, of course. Um, These prayers are handwritten, okay? So we're going to get to it. Okay, let me, um, hold on. Let's get started. Close your eyes, okay? Close your eyes. As I read, my eyes won't be able to close, but... May you feel the anointing in me. May God touches, heals, cover, like, I don't know, work in you guys. Whoever needs healing, breakthrough, I don't know. So may God, my God, Jehovah God, touch you guys. And please do have faith, okay? 
do have faith and you guys gonna see god's wonder okay i am new to this i'm still working towards myself okay um so work with me here let's let's get to it okay so may the anointing in me touches like may the holy spirit in me the anointing touches you guys all right god father god i bind every spirit of death hovering around my life and everybody's life watching this right now in the mighty name of jesus christ i command every dead organ in my body and everybody body to jerk back to life now in the mighty name of jesus christ i reject every spirit of death and the grave in the name of jesus christ i declare supernatural restoration of everything i have lost and everything they have lost and our life in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Father God, let your creative power operate afresh in my entire body and everybody watching this in our system in Jesus' mighty name. Father, let the fire of the Holy Spirit enter my bloodstream and everybody's bloodstream watching this. Cleanse our system in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command every evil plantation in my life and their life come out with all your roots in the name of Jesus Christ. Evil strangers in my body, in my womb, in their room, their body, come all the way out your hiding places in the name of Jesus Christ. I coughed out and vomit evil poisons in my body system and their body in the name of Jesus Christ. Let all negative deposits circulating in my blood and their bloodstream be flushed out by the blood of Christ in the name of Jesus. I am covered by the blood and so are you guys. We are covered. Holy Ghost, fire, burn from the top of our head to the side of our feet. I separate myself and them from every spirit of death. In the name of Jesus, I separate myself and them from every evil curse of death in Jesus' mighty name. I come against every monitoring spirit in our life. I deaf them, bind them, dumb them, and hit them with a dose of confusion. And I scatter them and I chain the demons in fire in the name of Jesus Christ in Nazareth. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. So as we're done praying, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it, guys. I'm feeling I'm feeling the fire, God. Oh Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So I covered you guys under the blood. May Jehovah God work his way in you guys. May he do his wonders. May he prove to you guys that he is still God and he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he still do work miracles. As you guys do have faith and trust him and listen to these prayers and the testimony. So may God do what he got to do for you guys. So I thank him for our life. I thank him for everything that he's doing in our life. And we bless his name. And we worship him and give him all the glory that is due to him and only him. So Jehovah God, thank you for this day. Thank you. So thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for being here. And if you have already subscribed, thank you. If you have not, like, please do so. And I'm not sure what days I'm going to be posting, but just turn on the notification thing for whenever I post so you don't miss it and um like and share and you know may god bless you as you do so um yeah so it's 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 amazing being here with you guys and doing this it's been a while i wanted to start i just i don't know what has been holding me back but today has finally come and 
today was the day. And I thank God for it, that I just came out from whatever chain that was holding me back. Because, you know, testimony is a big thing for God. And it brings souls to God. And it's still, like, it shows and proves that God is still. So, yeah. So, yeah, do subscribe, please. Um, Share it. Like, um, that's it for today. I would end it here. Once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. And thanks for sharing and subscribing. So, I'll see you guys soon, okay? Ciao. Team Jesus. Team Jesus. Mm. Jesus. Bye, guys. Love you.